Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to create your own unique typography using Adobe Illustrator. For homework, please be sure to review all the content on this Adobe Spark page where there's a whole bunch of different tips and tricks and important information that will help you in the creation of your own typography. Be sure to, in, to review all of the homework down at the bottom so that you're prepared for class. In this explainer video, I'm going to demonstrate how to modify an existing typeface using Adobe Illustrator to help you create your own unique alphabet. To start, we're going to go to our graphic design resources folder in Google Docs, and you're going to download the typography template. Once you've downloaded that, go ahead and open it up in Adobe Illustrator. You'll notice the document has two different artboards. One with a typography practice space and the other the final typography alphabet artboard. This is where you'll be organizing your final content for review and critique. Notice at the top of each of the artboards are the instructions for how you're going to start your process. You'll notice that the typography practice space has guides that will help you to construct your letters. This also includes an ascender line, a descender line, a baseline, and your X height. This is especially helpful when you're trying to build uppercase and lowercase letters. To begin practicing with the creation of our own typography, we're going to start by making a new layer. In the layers panel on the right hand side, go down to the bottom corner, click on the square with a folded edge, and you'll create a new layer. You can Double click on the title to rename this practice. Our board below, we are going to be using the type tool to spell out the words hello and spark, both in lowercase and uppercase, in a font style of your choice. We're using these particular words because they both have straight vertical lines and rounded lines. This will help us to be consistent with the creation of our alphabet letters as we go. To begin, click on the type tool on your toolbar on the left hand side. Inside of our practice space, click once and a default text will appear. You can change this by simply typing on your keyboard. We'll begin by typing hello. Click again in another space on your practice space and do the same thing but this type time in uppercase. and then repeat for the other words. By using your main selection tool, we can select all of our type here and we can expand it and stretch it if we'd like. If we hold down our shift key, we can expand and maintain those proportions. You'll notice that the size of our font is also adjusted when we do this. We can individually select each of our words as well and move it within our practice space to be in line with our ascenders, descenders, baseline, and X height. We can also adjust the character styles and the font itself by selecting all of our type and going up to our character panel at the top and scroll through all of the different styles. Find one that you would like to adjust. To begin to modify your type, select the word, go to Object, Expand, and in the dialog box, make sure that Object and Fill are selected. This will allow us to transform typeface into a movable shape and vector graphic. Go ahead and press OK, and then using your direct selection tool, you'll notice that each of these letters has anchors and points that we can adjust. Using the direct selection tool, you can select on one letter and click on an anchor point to begin to make modifications. Click and hold and drag out to begin to alter your letter. If you zoom in and click on an anchor point, you'll also notice another point which will allow you to make curved lines from those sharp edges. Begin to experiment with how you might like to alter an existing typeface to make it something that's your own. 
Be sure to pay careful attention to how you're adjusting your vertical lines as well as some of your curved lines, like on the letter E and O, so that you can be consistent along the way. When adjusting the anchor points on a curved line, you'll also notice there's the opportunity to adjust a handle to make something that's very curved into perhaps something that's a little bit more sharp. As you begin to experiment, you may find that you'd like to add anchor points so that you can continue to alter your letters in unique ways. To do that, click on your letter, and then go over to your pen tool, click and hold, and click on Add Anchor Point Tool. Find a place where you'd like to add an anchor point, and click on the path, and now you've created a new anchor point. Go to your Direct Selection Tool, select that anchor, and then you can make another adjustment. Another way for you to experiment with modifying your text is by clicking on a letter or the word, going up to Effect, and seeing all of these different options for how you can adjust your letters. I like to go to Warp and try all of these different options to see what I can get. By clicking on those different effects, you have other options for how you can modify your letters. Pay attention to how you're modifying them and perhaps even take note so that way you can adjust them in the same preferences later on. After experimenting with this process and determining a style that you like, begin it again, but this time completing the entire alphabet. Again, paying careful attention to your vertical and your curved lines. Once you've created a new typeface that you're happy with, we're going to begin to transfer our letters over into our final typography alphabet artboard. On this 13 by 19 document, we will be printing it out and having a critique with our class, ultimately displaying it around the school for others to see. To begin, start by creating a new layer by clicking on the button in the bottom right-hand corner and labeling that layer Final. Then, click your mouse and drag it over the content that you've created in the practice layer. Press Command-C and then click on your final layer and press Command V. Now you've just copied that content from your practice layer into your new layer on your artboard. Now what we need to do is organize the content in this final 13 by 9 document so that it can be presented for critique and for printing for the final presentation. And here I have my final typography composition. You can see that I've organized the content to fill the space. I even modified the scale of the, the numbers below so it would fit appropriately. I finally added a title, which is optional, but something you might like to try. Finally, we're going to save. Go to File, Save As. I'm going to save this to my Documents folder so I can find it easily. And I'm saving it as my name, underscore, and final typography project. Make sure you're saving it as an Adobe Illustrator file so that we can modify it if we need to. Click Save, OK, and then you can upload to your Google Docs folder.